I get asked a lot by people that are looking for ideas, suggestions, and input on how to make great YouTube videos, which I'm really complimented by because I don't know that I make great YouTube videos, <laughs> but I definitely have some ideas, some suggestions, and some things that this old fogey definitely likes to see in videos that may not hold true for everybody, but that I think makes your video look a whole lot better. Here's some things that I've learned along the way, things that I've had to work on and improve, and things that I do differently, and ways that I think they'll help you make a much better looking and more interesting video as well. One of the first things is to think about your backdrop. What's behind you? When I first started shooting videos, my very first few I actually did in a side room of the church, which I'll show you here in just a minute, wasn't a great backdrop. On another side was a whole lot of couches, a couple big screen TVs. So then I wanted to make things a little more interesting, wanted to give people something else to see. And so I started using my office and put together the shelves. I had a different version when I first started and created something back there to see. One of the things I would generally suggest is keep it simple. Don't put a window behind you because it's going to backlight. It causes all sorts of lighting issues. Oftentimes, something that's there to look at but not distract. I, My backdrop is actually much busier than you probably should do. A couple pictures, not a white wall, but something with a little color and generally simple. A living room wall can work, a bedroom wall, don't let me see your bed, I don't want to see that, but something simple. Don't shoot in your car. I know there's a lot of people that like to shoot in their cars and it's just not a good looking backdrop. You want it to add to your video, not take away from it. So look for your backdrop first. Also where you record, which is going to affect your sound quality. Sound is something I have struggled with a bunch over the years. And I'll let you kind of see my setup. If you're looking at this angle now, you can see I've actually got a microphone here and my camera I record on is right there. My camera does have onboard sound, which this is what that sounds like. And you can see why I don't use it. Yeah, it doesn't sound real good, and part of that is because the room I'm in. I don't have good acoustics here. But a few years ago, I picked up this uh, microphone, which actually runs over into my computer. I record through Audacity. I can kill the noise input, and I get much better sound this way. Be aware that onboard sound for a lot of cameras isn't always great, and again, the room makes a big difference. This is Framing backgrounds, and how to help make a good video. And then another thing is your framing. If you get into any sort of photography, videography, things like that, you are going to hear about this thing called the rule of thirds. And basically what it is, is if you take a tic-tac-toe board and stick it over your screen, you can divide your screen up into nine different sections. Those sections are all going to kind of help you lay out your picture. One thing I should say right here, shoot your video horizontally. If you're shooting on your phone, let your phone go this way, not this way. We are not TikTok. Your TV doesn't go this way. I know some people like to shoot Instagram videos. Don't, don't. If you want people to watch on the biggest, most widest things that they can watch, shoot horizontal, not vertical. It's going to look better and you can show more in the picture. You can get a bigger picture that way because you can see more background versus here and then like five feet over their head. Shoot horizontal. Then you break up your screen into thirds. The big thing with the rule of thirds is if you use it properly, it can make your pictures look more interesting. But if you use it improperly, it can actually hurt your pictures. The idea is that if you put things at the corners of that tic-tac-toe board. So right where the intersections of the lines are, so if you go here, 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 and here approximately, that if those are the kind of where your centers of things are, it's going to look generally more interesting than if they're just in the center. So for example, when I shoot dialogue between characters, you'll notice that I turn a little bit and now all of a sudden I'm shooting in rule of thirds, that I'm on one third of the screen or I can go this way and again I'm on the other side of the screen. Now here's the trick. On my camera, I didn't move at all. In fact, you can see over here, all I did was just turn. 
and then turn. And then when I edit the video, that turn suddenly gets shifted to rule of thirds, and I crop the picture in, zoom it a bit, and then move it so it fits the rule of thirds. That way it becomes more interesting, but my camera focus is still in the center because cameras like to focus in the center. Also, rule of thirds generally for vlogs, which is what this is, doesn't work real well if you don't have something to counter that other part of the screen. So keep that in mind. If you're just talking to the screen and it's one person, put yourself in the middle because you are the center of attention. Now again, if it's characters moving back and forth and there's a dialogue or there's something else going on, it works great. If I'm gonna put a title in my screen like this one, well now I've moved over to rule of thirds because I have something to balance that out with as opposed to just nothing. You don't want that blank because it looks terrible. <laughs> So let me show you some other ways that rule of thirds works as well as show you a couple other little things here that I do. So let me jump over to this camera to show you a little bit more of my backdrop setting and how that rule of thirds works. And again, you can see my camera is right there that I normally shoot video on. It doesn't move. In fact, to make sure my focus stays right, I actually have a mark right there on the floor. That's my focus point. I actually set up a tripod and then a little bucket on top and I focus my camera on that and use that to mark where I stand so I know I'm always in focus. So if I'm going to shift or do something with rule of thirds, I stay on that point and I just rotate. And then when I get into editing, then I will crop the picture and adjust it and be able to make it rule of thirds that way to help make it more interesting. But I always stand in the center when I film because it keeps me in focus and it lines me up with my microphone so that way I am not getting echo and everything. You can see my sound sounds a little bit different in the office. My office isn't bad acoustically, although it's not great. But let me show you where I originally filmed and all of the issues. Okay, in fact, here, let me give you, this is why you don't put windows behind you. Uh, that's called backlighting and a lot of times it'll actually make your face really dark. This is a good camera on my phone so it can compensate, but you don't wanna do that. You also don't want to give yourself a blank, boring wall, especially not white. And you're gonna notice here in a second, my acoustics are going to change very dramatically. Okay, so I've got a little bit of light, not great lighting. That was my original backdrop, was just plain white wall. And you probably notice that you're now hearing a bit of an echo as well. What I'm actually in is I am in a small hallway so I can see, show you a doorway there and a doorway there and it's only about eight feet long and yes bad echo the other room in my church here also this is a much bigger room but again you can hear the echo it is not designed for sound and acoustics so yeah I can look better but it sounds horrible and trying to compensate for that and it's not a room I can put in sound insulation and stuff. It, it's very difficult. And then again, we would be looking at plain walls. If you can have a wall where off white, some other color and put up some pictures or something behind to give a little bit of interest will help. So rule of thirds, again, with vlogs, oftentimes you wanna be centered. In fact, I tell people we're a little bit more like a newscast, and if you watch a newscast and how they will go back and forth from center to rule of thirds, there's one third, or to rule of thirds, there's another, and they'll go back and forth depending upon what they're doing. But they generally won't go to rule of thirds unless they have something here. Like this is where they're showing the picture for the news clip or something like that. That's a rule of thirds picture. Or you can do it when you were doing something different. So if you notice a lot of my park vlogs, when I really hit my rule of thirds, I'm walking along because now you can see here and you can see all of this stuff behind me. And that's how I like to try to shoot. It keeps it more interesting than if I shoot right there. And that just isn't as good, but now this gives motion. However, you also wanna make sure that you have yourself facing the right way. So as I turn around here to walk through this, notice normally I shoot here. Watch what it looks like if I'm shooting here. That just doesn't look good because now you can see not really where I'm going, but where I've been and it doesn't line up as well. So rule of thirds is great when you use it right. 
If you don't know how to use it, just put yourself in the center and you're going to be much safer that way. But if you want to add some interest, if you want to be able to make things look better, then learn how to shoot from the thirds. If I do a live stream on the road, I'll oftentimes kind of shoot this way so you can see what's behind me at the park. And that's kind of the point is to balance the picture. You want it balanced and the balance actually overrides the rule of thirds. Because whatever is in the side, you need to make sure that what here, what's here is balancing that out and making it look good. So if you've got somebody moving, well, where are they going? That's kind of what you want to show. If you have tracks, for example, if you're shooting railroad tracks or road, you want to kind of go from one part of the screen up to the other to give the impression of movement. Rule of thirds is great for showing movement and direction. But if you're not sure what else to do with it, put yourself in the center. And if you're going to shoot with the camera, especially when it has a fixed focus that can't adjust to where the subject is moving around, then shoot with you in the center and fix the rule of thirds in editing instead. It's going to save you a lot of trouble and it's going to make your picture look a whole lot better. So I hope all of that helps you, gives you some tips on how to shoot, how not to shoot, and some things I've learned the good way and in some cases the hard way. Because if you look at my early videos, yeah, the sound and the background and some of the other stuff, ooh, it, it's, it's bad. So save yourself some trouble, save yourself from making early videos like I made, and be able to step up your quality.